Hi, my name is Katie, and I am an analytics engineer at Seek. In this video series, I'm going to walk you through scaling analyses over many assets with Seek and show you the steps to create this organizer topic dashboard. In this dashboard, I have an overall tree map monitoring each wind turbine. I have a chart evaluating the count of the logs on each turbine, and I have trend and table views that I can swap using asset swapping. I have created this dashboard and the underlying workbench analysis using an asset group. In part one, we will create the asset group and tree map in workbench analysis. In part two, we will create the tables and charts, again using workbench analysis. And in part three, we will create the organizer topic dashboard. First, I want to show you why I am building an asset group for this analysis. Here in the workbench, you can see I have an asset tree organizing the wind turbine data. I have pinned this asset tree to the top of my workbook for easy access using the pin button. I could easily scale the analysis using this asset tree. For information on how to do that, check out the video on working with assets linked in the description. This method works well for a lot of use cases. However, in this use case, I want more customization of the asset structure for the analysis. I will illustrate that in this demo where I have used the existing asset tree to build the tree map. You can see here, I have my wind turbine split into north and south. This is great for signal organization, but for this use case, I want to see them all on one level instead of navigating up and down the tree. Also, I am missing some data in the asset tree. For example, here, Turbine 11 is using a secondary wind speed detector, which isn't picked up by the tree map because it is named differently. And Turbine 12 is brand new and hasn't been built into the asset tree. Asset groups allow me to easily map signals to specific assets, edit signals as changes are needed, and add new assets as they come online. Also, in this use case, I would like to apply different formulas to the assets. For example, the wind speed range is a little different for some of the wind turbines based on the design of the turbines. Asset groups make it easy to customize formulas for specific assets. Another reason you may want to use an asset group is to build an asset structure in the first place. Maybe you don't have an asset tree already built in Seek. You can build one using Seek Data Lab. For more information on how to do that, check out the resources in the description. Or you can construct one right in Workbench Analysis using asset groups. Here is an example of the asset group we are going to build in this video. I have combined all the turbines into one level. I have built the conditions into the asset group so I can customize the formulas for different turbines. I have also fixed the signal mapping for Turbine 11 and added the new turbine, Turbine 12. This was all done in Seek Workbench without the need for Python coding. All right, now let's jump into constructing the asset group. I will start in a blank worksheet in Workbench Analysis. I still have the asset tree I showed before, and I'm going to use that as a starting point for my asset group. Let's start by navigating to the Create Asset Group button in the Data tab you can see it opens up the Asset Group Editor. First, I am going to name the Asset Group Turbine Analysis, then I will navigate to the Asset Tree in the Data pane and start populating the Asset Group, starting with the first turbine. I will navigate down to the signals I want to start with and click the plus button to add them to the Asset Group. You can see it automatically populates the signal and asset name in the Asset Group Editor. I can now navigate back up the asset tree one level, select all, and use the drop down to specify that I want to add only matching items under selected assets. You can see it adds the wind speed and grid power production signals for each of the assets in this node of the asset tree. I will repeat that for the south turbine field. Now I have turbines one through 11 added to the asset group. You'll notice that Turbine 11's wind speed did not populate. This is due to what we saw before with using the secondary wind speed on that turbine. We can fix this in asset groups by manually adding the wind speed signal. 
I will click on the gray plus button, navigate through the asset tree again, and select secondary wind speed. Now the signal is mapped in the asset group. I will save the asset group, and I can now see the turbine analysis asset group in the data pane. To edit the asset group again, I can click on the pencil next to the asset group item, and it brings me back to the asset group editor. If I wanted to add signals that were not in an asset tree, I can do that manually. Here I will click add asset and I will add turbine 12. I will then click the gray plus button and search for the signal to map it to the asset group. I will do that for both items and save the asset group. Now I'm going to start adding calculations into the asset group. First, I will add wind speed for turbine one from the asset group to the trend. For this analysis, I want to smooth all the wind speed signals. I will start by first creating this calculated item using tools, then add it to the asset group. Here, I will use the signal smoothing tool, select the signal I would like to smooth, and apply the agile filter. Now, I will open the asset groups editor, select add column, add calculated item, existing seek item, and select the item smooth wind speed. This will copy the formula from that item and open a formula window. If you are not familiar with seek formula, I recommend checking out the resources linked in the description of this video. In the formula window, I will give this item a name, smooth wind speed, and verify the mapping to each variable is correct. I can see the variable icon has changed from a jagged signal to a table icon, indicating the formula is referencing the asset group column. When I am satisfied with the formula, I will select add calculated item. Now I can see a new column has been added to the asset group with the function applied to each asset. I can click on each of these formulas and customize them as needed. I will save the asset group and I can see the new item appear under each turbine. I'm going to add the newly created signal to the trend and remove the original signal that is not built into the asset group. Next, I want to create three different conditions. I'm going to create them first, then add them to the asset group. Using value search, I will create a condition for when the wind speed is in range. I will search the smooth wind speed signal for when it is between 8 and 55 miles per hour. You can see the condition appear at the top of the trend view. Now I am going to add grid power production to the trend from the asset group and use value search again to create a condition for when there is no power being produced. Here, searching the grid power production signal for when it is less than or equal to zero. Then, I will use composite condition to find the combination of the two conditions, when the wind speed is in range and the turbine is not producing power. I will call this non-productive time and choose both of my conditions, setting the combination method to intersection. Now I will build each of these conditions into the asset group. This is done very similarly to the smooth wind speed signal we added. I will navigate to add column, add calculated item, existing seek item, and select the wind speed and range. You'll notice that again, the formula items default to the items in the asset group, showing the table icon. It looks good, so I will add it to the tree. Now it has populated the same formula for all the turbines. I know that turbine 9 has a different wind speed range, so I'm going to edit that formula by clicking on the formula and updating the parameters. If needed, I could also apply these changes to the entire column by using the checkbox in the lower right. Next, I will add the no power condition by repeating the same steps. You can see I've created it here. Since the non-productive time condition depends on the first two conditions, 
I'm going to first save the asset group, and when I open the asset group editor again, I will now be able to use the items I have just created. I will repeat the same steps again. Add a column, add a calculated item, add an existing seek item, and I'll select the non-productive time condition. I will first give it a name, then check the variables. Notice that this time I will need to change the variable mapping. You can see the formula variables are referencing the original item mapping by the condition icon instead of the table icon. This is because Seek automatically matches the items to asset group columns if they are using the same names. Since the names here are different than the column names, they have this 01 at the end, they did not automatically map to asset group columns. I do recommend using different names for the original items versus the asset group items to keep track of items more easily. Here, I will use the dropdown to update the item mapping to the correct table columns. Now it looks good, so I will add the item to the asset group. I want to note that throughout this video, I have demonstrated adding calculation using existing seek items, but there's also an option to build a formula from scratch. This option will open a blank formula window and you could create the formula directly in the asset group without first creating it in the workbench. This is a great option if you're familiar with formula and you know exactly what you want to build into the asset group. Back in the trend view, I will add all the items I have built into the asset group and remove all the original items from the details pane. I will then add the asset labels to the lane so you can see better what I am looking at and swap this analysis to turbine 9. This turbine had a different wind speed range and you can see when I open the formula editor that the different wind speed parameters have been retained through the swap. I could also change them right here in this formula window and it would update in the asset group. Finally, I can create the tree map. I don't need the wind speed and range, so I will remove that from the details pane. Then I will navigate to the tree map view and select priority colors for each of the items. I will update the time range to one hour and step the time range to now to see how the turbines have been performing in the last hour. Now I can see an overview of each of the turbines and click into each one to swap the assets and understand what is going on in more detail. Thank you for watching part one of this video series. Check out the next videos in the series to see how to create the table and chart views and also create the dashboard in Organizer Topic.